Breaker Broke 23. In this video, I will show you how to permanently install a Bluetooth receiver into your home stereo slash audio video receiver. Alright, so I put a few videos out there how to add Bluetooth to your home stereos and stuff, but uh, people ask me, hey, why don't you give me something that uh, is mounted actually inside the stereo? And this little STA20 um, is going to be the guinea pig for this video. Um, I'm going to actually use this on my home computer setup. It's really portable. I like all the functions of it. I like the sound, and I don't really need a powerhouse. But I would like to add Bluetooth. So there are several ways we can add Bluetooth to these units. And let's just start with the devices first. So the most common uh, Bluetooth device that uh, newbies use are these rechargeable units. You just plug a, a USB cable into there, recharge the internal battery. You have the little 3.5 millimeter jack there in the middle to um, give audio to your unit. And some people will just plug them into an auxiliary input or maybe even on the back on the RCAs. Um, the problem with this is as of course I went to turn this on and the battery's dead. So these kind of suck, so don't use this. Now I really like this Micus Bluetooth transmitter and receiver. This is battery operated. This is for a portable function as well, so I could plug this into here and be good to go. Or use a 3.5 millimeter uh, female adapter to RCA adapter and then just plug it in to the back here. But I want something a little more permanent, something that um, turns on and off every time I hit this power switch. Um, I like the Harman uh, BT, BTA-10. This is actually one of my very favorite Bluetooth receivers, up in the top three, I would say. But again, um, it, it needs an external power supply, like this wall wart AC adapter. All right, and that's obviously just too much to stuff in there. The Logitech is a really popular one. Um, we sell a lot of these on um, Amazon. Um, this is a pretty popular unit. Uh, the problem with this is this has an on-off switch. And so when you go to mount something like this in here, it would, um, you know, it's just not going to work. What I want is these units. I like these type of units. The JL Audio. MBTRX is a favorite of mine. I've gutted this one. I just have the chassis. This is another project. Um, the Fusion uh, BT100 is the one I'm going to go with for this application. And the reason why I'm going to go with this Marine unit is when you use a unit like the Fusion or the JL Audio piece, these have no on-off switches. These are meant to be triggered on and off by either a toggle switch on a dashboard in a boat or by the power antenna lead in your car stereo. And every time you power this particular unit up, it goes into a pairing mode and it'll search for whatever you've paired to it previously or it'll go into the pairing mode so your device can find it very easily. So basically, you can install this in a permanent situation and just forget about it. It's just always there when you turn the stereo on and off. It's always ready to pair. And these are a very good quality unit. Because they are meant to go in an automotive or marine application, the uh, DC power supply filtering on these things are unbelievable. Um, some of these cheaper units, and not the Logitech, but some of these cheaper units that use USB adapters like this and stuff like this, you use a uh, try to use this with the AC adapter and you'll get a lot of noise in from the cheap adapters and you know they're just a just a pain in the butt so if you try to go on the cheap it's gonna bite you in the butt with noise um, probably you know seven out of ten times you try this so what I want to do is I want to take this uh, Bluetooth the the BT100 and what I was going to do originally, when I was thinking about this video, I was going to permanently mount it inside of this receiver. And you can do this. This is an option. I just don't have enough room inside the receiver. I don't really want this 
to interfere with my AM reception and stuff like that just in case this creates any noise and I don't want any internal noise that could be created in here to bleed into my Bluetooth just as a precaution. Another thing I like is I've got about three or four feet of cable here so what I can do is I can actually mount this up high like on the back of my entertainment center or on a wall or on top of a monitor you know the computer monitor so I can get maximum range so if I happen to walk out of the room this will still pick up a signal to whereas if I mount it inside here by the time I put the metal lid on and say you're putting this in an old vintage Pioneer or Marantz or something the metal chassis and everything can and will block a little bit of your incoming signal so what I'm gonna do with this is I am going to use the um, the power supply in this home stereo to power my mobile device here I'm going to loop the RCA's around like this and what I'm gonna do is because this doesn't have that many inputs I just have the the phono and the tape input this is also an auxiliary input I'm going to loop this around I'm going to take my power leads and I'm going to hook them into my power supply and I'll show you how I'm going to do that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a notch in right here and this cord is going to come out so I can mount the Bluetooth device where I want it to get maximum range now like I say I'm doing this for a couple reasons I want maximum range but I don't want to interfere with the workings inside of here as far as any generated noise goes um, if you have like an old vintage home stereo or a large audio video receiver well you're gonna have tons of room in there and if range isn't a big deal yeah you can just pop this in there double stick it wherever you'd like and you're just gonna have a really nifty tidy setup you'll never see the Bluetooth device hook the RCA's on the inside you could hook it up on the inside either on the back of the panel or go directly to the PC board one thing I one thing I want to state is in doing this if I want to plug other projects into here I can just temporarily unplug my Bluetooth even though it's still you know permanently hooked up in there and then I could plug in another CD source or something like that I happen to be lucky enough on this STA 20 that when I have an RCA uh, signal already going into there if I did want to use another source like to test maybe a CD player or something I could use an RCA to 3.5 millimeter adapter when I plug it in here it'll actually disable or cut my RCA's out here so I know it's a very uh, long way to go about this but I think it's worth it overall so um, yeah let's get started this is gonna be a cool install okay so I've decided what I'm going to do with this installation. I'm going to use the Fusion Bluetooth 100 device. I am not going to mount it internal here. Now look, this is totally optional, you guys. You guys can cut this cord down, cut it to length, and mount this inside. But like I told you, I'm going for maximum range. I'm a radio guy. I want maximum range for everything. Um, and I don't want any interference between the two devices. If you have a large uh, video receiver or... A home stereo amplifier whatever and you want to do this you can maybe stick this to the sidewall or something but I'm going for maximum range and I want to be able to uh, unplug these RCA's from my inputs because I very I only have one input here so um, in case I want to add something else down the line I can just unplug it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rob power from this unit to power up our Bluetooth device like I said before don't have room to do this kind of stuff and quite honestly for the average DIYer this is this adding a wall wart or converting a wall wart to, to put in here is just a, a house fire waiting to happen and that's over a lot of people's capabilities so I'm gonna make this really easy so what I got here is I'm working with this live by the way so what I've got here is the the units plugged in I've gone through here just a few minutes ago and determined that 
in this area here, this is my high voltage AC area, obviously. This is the transformer, so I got a 110 volts that comes in here, goes into the transform, it goes into the, onto this board, I'm sorry, then it's distributed to the transformer. And the transformer puts uh, a voltage into this power supply section here in this, the uh, receiver. And what I've determined is, is I've got 110 volts here on all these leads. This transformer is putting out anywhere from 88 to 44 volts and that's obviously too high but none of these components in here work on that high voltage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe and look for a, a spot here where I can grab uh, 12 to 15 volts um, I'm just looking here at this power supply section right now I'm seeing these two filter caps I'll bet you dollars to donuts that there is roughly 12 volts or so going to this chassis to this board so we're stepping down from 110 to about 12 eh, or more maybe 12 to 15 so let's see what we got so here's what you're gonna need for this right first of all safety first don't touch anything with your bare hands if you're a newbie to this uh, and this is like maybe over your head or you're thinking ah, oh, this is a little dangerous all right just stop don't even just stop the video don't even go any further but what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a good voltmeter I'm using a fluke 115 a excellent meter to go with. They're relatively inexpensive. They're like 140, 150 bucks. Well worth the investment, by the way. You guys in your $30 meters, you can have them. I've gone through so many of those in my career. Um, it's just not worth it. So what I did is earlier, I figured out, like I said, this is my high voltage area. I'm not gonna mess with this. This is gonna be my target area. This power supply, these filter caps. This is where I'm gonna probably grab my power from. So let's turn it around here so you can get it in the shot here. All right, so right in here, I'm seeing there was a metal access panel here. I'm seeing that right here are my power supply caps. Right here and here are my power supply caps. So I'm thinking, obviously, this is going to be the negative side of my capacitor. And if I flip the back over, I can look at the band on the cap and see that this is my negative lead right here. This is also a chassis, neg a chassis ground for this. Um, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I'm going to get a good clean 14 volts off of here, 12, 14, 15, whatever. So I'm actually going to turn the unit on. Okay. I'm going to put my, uh, my voltmeter in DC voltage. Okay. I'm going to take my probe. I'm going to go right here because this is the negative lead of my capacitor. I'm going to hold it onto this tab. I'm going to stab this one and Sweet. I have 14.6 volts. Okay. I'm going to turn my on off switch to off and let's see if the voltage falls. There it is. So guys, this is my switch voltage. I'll try to do this with one hand, but this is my switch voltage. So there's the receiver off. There's a receiver on. There's a receiver off. So now we know where, our, where we're going to grab power from. So that's step one. So step two is going to get this unit prepared to actually physically mount my, should we turn it off? It is off, okay. We're gonna to mount this uh, into here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably notch it out right here and I want my RCAs to loop back over here to my input. Now I could get them from the back, like I say, or on the board but I want to have this as an option. Someday I may may want to come back in here like I'm testing a CD player or something and I may want to just unplug the Bluetooth real quick and, and do this. But keep in mind, I want the Bluetooth to turn on and off every time I turn the stereo on and off. So it's a you know permanent install. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little notch in there and then we'll start wiring this puppy up. Okay, so now I've got the unit installed. And what I did on the back here was I drilled a hole in the back and then made a notch to come up so this can be pulled out if necessary. And then, let me try to get that in there, one hand. And then now that sits down like that, nice. I'm not pinching the wire. Uh, it's got a strain relief on both sides. I didn't have a grommet. Um, at this location but anyway so that's gonna work out really nice and show you the wiring underneath 
We've tagged into that power supply circuit. And now we're ready to give it a test fire. Okay, so I have this system all hooked up to my speakers. I uh, got it plugged into the power outlet. I have my Bluetooth unit installed. Now remember, I don't mean to be redundant, but some people just don't pay attention and then ask me in the comments, hey, Breaker Broke, why didn't you put that inside the rig? Well, I went over that. You can, you can put this inside your rig. In fact, the way I've showed you um, to do this uh, is actually meant to have it installed, but I opted to go external with all my wiring internal because I want a little bit more flexibility with my system here and I want to be able to extend this and get some more range. What I'm going to do when I install this in my computer room is I'll put this um, up on the wall and uh, I'll be able to walk throughout the uh, basement apartment here and uh, not uh, have any loss in range. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to hook this up to my laptop and my Acer laptop is very hard to hook up to Bluetooth so I figured this would be a good way to show you guys. So here's what we do. We're just going to turn the power to the stereo on and you just heard it. It turned on. It's ready to pair to my computer. I'll pair it to the computer. Wait for the confirmation noise. It's confirmed. Let's play some music. Here we go. So I recorded this off of an old Hammond organ uh, vinyl LP. There you have it. It's as easy as that. So that is how you add a Bluetooth to your stereo receiver. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Please uh, give a thumbs up if you feel this video is worth it. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, stick with me. We're gonna be doing some giveaways and some stuff and I uh, have a few polls that I want you guys to uh, participate in. So uh, we've got more content coming, thanks guys.